A word for our listeners. Octung Cthulhu is set in the 1930s and 40s. We will be using terms and sayings from those times, including some that could be considered offensive. It is not our intention to offend. We merely wish to offer as accurate a view of the time period as possible. Welcome to Masks of Nyarlathotep, a Nerds Domain Gaming Podcast. Join us each week as our investigators uncover the corruption of the mythos in World War II. Starring George Chimbles, Phil Durham, Rob Walker, Justin Kimmett, Shirley Nedzwicky, and Scott Troiano. With Matt Quiet running the table as the keeper. Eldritch evils and crazed Nazi cultists await you just beyond this music. Hi everybody, and welcome back to the Nurse Mavers. It's Masks of Nyarlathotep. I'm Matt, and I'm here with Shirley. Hello. And John. Hi. And Phil. Yes. Phyllis. <laughs> Felicia. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. Bye-bye. Um, and we are doing a flashback for Octung Cthulhu for Brian Blake. Brian, how's it going fixing up them kids? Oh, um, apparently I told them the, uh, appropriate Bible story. <laughs> yeah. Because, well, certainly with my knowledge, I certainly could have told them one of the many inappropriate ones from, <laughs> yeah. from the good book. Oh. <laughs> Let me so. tell you about the time that the devil... <laughs> What? Have you heard of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah? <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's so horrible. Noah's a good tale. Um, so, um, <laughs> Calvin, you were headed back <clears throat> to Father Thomas's house to kind of look in on... Sister Anna. There you go. Sister Anna. Well, hopefully, Anna. Not, Anna. Anna. hopefully not right away since she's in the bath. I'm no, the they bath. said they'd be ready. <laughs> I don't remember. Awkwardly, were you in the, the bath? bath? <laughs> Probably not yet. Okay. So, um, yes, there's Was a... Is that a cue for me? No, I don't know. Okay, nobody's he's good. There's, there's Johnny's a, talking. So there's a knock on the door of Father Thomas's hut. Sister Sister Anna, are you around? Uh, yes, come in. So I enter, and she seems to be in... Full garb. Yes. Yeah, she's probably still looking at the, the papers on yes, the I was desk. still reading the Latins. Anything of uh, interest here in Father Thomas's belongings? Um, actually, I did find some notes here. Um, he did <clears throat> speak with a. It looks like, <clears throat> and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this correctly, a Sang of the Choo Choo Tribe. What does he uh, say about Sang of the Choo Choo Tribe? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> You're not sorry. I am sorry. <laughs> Can we name it something else? Nope. It's out of the book. It's recorded. And it's it, canon. Okay. And it's hard to go back to the first episode, I would imagine now. Oh, Cracker Jacks. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Edit. Uh, the Choo Choo Tribe is spelled T-C-H-O, T-C-H-O. There's a Got hyphen it. between those. Choo Choo Tribe. Um, it says it. God. I feel like I'm in a bad, uh, in the middle of a bad scene. MST3K? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> here in his notes it says um, <clears throat> he met with a gentleman named Sang of the Choo Choo Tribe. And he was interested in the Sky God, which I'm assuming that Father Thomas was talking about our Lord and Savior. Yeah, that's a pretty general term for it among mm -hmm. the uh, indigenous peoples. Uh, it also notes that he went to see a rite of spring put on by the tribe uh, with Sang, as well as um, Sang took him to, at one point in time, took him to, which I'm assuming this is the last time that he went with Sang, uh, to learn about their, what they call, fire god. It looks like that's what it says here. Interesting. But he didn't get to finish journalizing this, which is interesting. It's just his notes. I would have uh, thought such an endeavor wouldn't be something uh, Father Thomas would have partaken in. Heathen rituals and all that. 
But I suppose you have to see it once in order to uh, decide how to approach abolishing it. Yes, yes. We usually try to learn as much as we can about a culture and then... Um, and then we... Uh, Supplant it? <laughs> no, sir. Um, we try to talk to them about the heathen ways um, that they are going about um, talking to the Lord and our Savior. So, <clears throat> um, so you're all good here? Is there anything you need? No, the women will be bringing some warm water so that I could... Uh, bathe and bathe my clothes and um, clean, wash my clothing. Um, very well. Was there anything else that you needed? No, I just wanted to come in and make sure that you were settled and fine. Yes, I'm very well taken care of. Thank you. All right, I shall. I'll probably be back later. Mm, thank you, Clive. Cal, Cal. Calvin, <laughs> Klein. <laughs> Is it really Calvin? It's Calvin. It's Calvin. Where's Clive come from? I have no <laughs> idea. You, you threw one at the end of the last episode, too. <laughs> I just kind of... <laughs> Calvin. Wow. Oh, my goodness. So, um, Blake, you kind of finish up with the um, the kids, and you tell them a story. Um, what are you headed... Where are you headed after that? Um... I would probably be feeling pretty <clears throat> uncomfortable not being able to communicate very well with um, anyone else, so I'd probably seek out um, Calvin. You would find Calvin returning to the hospital hut after speaking with Sister Anna. Okay. Um, how long did it take me to treat the children 10 minutes i mean they wrapping up washing off uh cuts and bruises and wrapping them okay um i would ask him to again inquire about the elder um the their generosity in in providing um particularly board but also room i'd want to make sure that um i repay that but then also just being um you know a good christian and and paying it forward and, and being generous that I'm offering to help in any way that I can that, that they will accept um, in terms of, of work. They actually, um, they treat you almost like a um, like a respected guest after you heal the kid or, you know, well, clean up the kids. Like, they don't allow you to do much. Like, they keep telling you that it's okay. And you pick up in the broken... In the Spanish that they're, that they're speaking in, you kind of get the idea that that you're just you're you're welcome here. They'll take care of you. Father Thomas is being taken care of. It's all t you know. Essentially, the the Catholic Church, by their way of paying for this stuff, is to bring supplies. So like they bring in food and they bring in um like um. Uh, what do you call that? Uh, spices and that kind of stuff, and that's kind of how you how the Catholic Church pays for these missionaries to stay and be treated as part of the community. Well, uh, and yes, and that's Father Thomas's. And then they seem to see you as an extension of that, and that's so. fair. So if I won't be overly aggressive in doing that, and if they won't, no, take I will my... wash these dishes. <laughs> but I, I wanted to make it clear that my character did try to make that effort. If Absolutely. they won't accept it, Absolutely. Okay, um, so Calvin, you just kind of hanging out? Yep, just uh, making sure everything's hunky dory. All right, so sister, you take a nice lukewarm bath, which still feels really good. Yes. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, what I would do is uh, take his books okay. while I'm bathing. Okay. And probably read while I'm relaxing and. It's not you know, um, working out the. It's not like you can spread out there and relax. Lots you're kind of kinda like you're you're. It's a little tight for you to sit in there. Mm -hmm. um, it's more of a get washed and get out kind of situation. Oh, okay. Like there's just not a lot of room in there for you. So no relaxing and reading. Not really. Book. Not really. Okay, okay. So, but I would be interested in more of the books that were laying around. Okay. Um. So the the afternoon 
and um, evening come and kind of go. Um, you're treated to another meal. There's um, some spirited discussion, like not just like they talk to you. They they seem incur- engaging and um, friendly. Everything seems to go pretty well, unless somebody else is going to jump in here and do something. Um, presumably, when I would run into uh, Anna, I would just catch up on um, anything oh, that yeah. she learned and um, saw. Right, I would definitely discuss with him about what I found in the journal okay. or in the notes. Um, and then I would probably ask um, <clears throat> Calvin um, to <clears throat> ask the elder what he knows about saying. Um, before that, uh, I would have looked for his journal. Did I find his journal? No, he may have taken it with him. Okay. Okay. Was there? Did you look in his Bible? Yes. And nothing, I didn't find anything. Nothing there. highlighted of or significance. No, no, no. Folded no. Book here. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Elder, um, this individual saying that came from the Choo Choo tribe, are you familiar with him yourself? Is there anything you can tell us about this particular? Um, he is one of their runners. Um, he comes between us and his tri- his his village, bringing um, goods back and forth. Okay. So what, he's what, well what did known. they trade? Um, we don't trade. We give them food and goods. Do they give you what? anything in return? Why? <laughs> <laughs> they al- allow us to stay here. So, are you offer tribute. <laughs> I assume you translate that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, we do offer tribute. It's it's something that's been going on for um, generations. It's not not we've not been threatened by them any time recently. It's just something that we've always done and continue to do. And you are prosperous enough to offer this tribute without any hardship for your own people they don't ask for much so it doesn't it doesn't really change anything for us do they have this habit with other other villages in the area it's possible i don't honestly know so um what was father thomas's take on this i'm not sure that he was aware of it I know that he spoke with uh, Tseng a couple of times, but beyond that, I'm not sure that he was aware. Interesting. But would you say that Tseng was well known to you then, since he Um, traveled back and forth? Was he always the person? Yes, he is their messenger for this generation. Eventually he'll grow old and someone else will Take take over. I see. Interesting. Well, thank you. All right, both. So, uh, the evening kind of comes and goes. You guys, um, another cot is provided in Father Thomas's home. All right, two other cots are provided. It's a little tight, but it's not that bad. Um, there's a little bit of room is in it, there. Is it a single room? Yes. Is is this o- is this okay, Blake? Should we like pitch a tent outside? You guys did sleep outside with her, so it wouldn't be too terribly weird. Well, wouldn't she have had like a pup tent or whatever? Yeah, we would have. Yeah, I guess that's yeah tents of our our own. I mean, good point. Sister, Um, is is that okay with you, or should we find other accommodations? I I will find other accommodations. I would encourage you to do so as well. Okay then. I will set up camp, as it were, uh, nearby. So that okay. Thank if, you. If there were any anyone to call out for me, I would be available. And you provide that, or you do that? You do the same, Blake. If if yeah, if he wants me to, I will be happy to set up tents uh, for both of us. Thank you. Again, just a simple pup tent, uh, big enough for one person to carry on their back. Okay. I, I don't need yeah. much. Basically, yeah. just a cover that isn't on top of us like a blanket. Yeah. Yeah. Something to keep the spiders from killing you, right? Yeah, the death, the the you can death spiders, right? Does, no, she, does she listen here. to this? Um, no, she doesn't. Okay, 
All right. So um, you guys sleep that night. I would like, uh, again, uh, Shirley and Phil to make con times five. You're used to this okay. by, by now, Calvin. Do I need so. to be on watch? No. Okay. No, you don't need to. No, no, I mean, I would be on watch. But. Yeah. No, no. That's You feel, you this this village you feel pretty safe in. What'd you get? Mm, I felt like 20. Whoa. Okay. Pass. Oh. Um, so you both are, uh, uh, Blake, you're starting to accomp- like get used to it. And you're feeling all right. You're still a little sluggish, but not that bad. Uh, surely something about that bath must have thrown everything off. And like now your humors are all out of whack. And this is too nice for you. Kick you. (laughs) All right. So you guys wake up the next morning, um, eat a quick breakfast and then head southwest to the Choo Choo uh, tribe. Um, I will. Maybe not profusely, but um, enthusiastically thank uh, the elder. They, he is very enthusiastic back. He seems very happy that to have met you, um, just in a general sense. So you guys head on down um, about, about three quarters of the day, so like three, four hours uh, walk, because um, you do stop. And break. It does. It is warm. So you do stop and break for water and to rest. About three or four hours into the walk. Um, yeah. You have a question? Um, as we're going, um, I would ask Calvin to ask our guide um, what his impressions and his knowledge of this tribe are. Oh, yeah. We have a guide from. The yeah. Yeah. Um, they are reclusive. The word he. The, he. He uses something similar to reclusive, but that's what you gain. You gather the idea that that's kind of the idea. Um, his his Spanish is not um, very good. It's it's here and there. Um, they're reclusive. They are. Um, they're known to be good warriors. They're quick. What um, weapons do they use? Blowguns, uh, spears, um, oh, poison. Okay. Uh, poison, yes. Bow and arrow, no. Interesting. Does, is there any known antidote for the poison? Oh, the poison, um, just makes you very tired or very sick. Um, but you'll get over it. It, it, it as, as soon as it works its way out of your system. But there's no known way to counteract it once it's in your system? Not really. Okay. Thank you. Um, so as uh, you get about four hours into the, into the journey, um, I need everyone to give me a listen check. <clears throat> missed it by 10. Oh, you're going to have to say it then, the mic. I missed it by 10. Succeeded. Pass. Okay, so Blake and um, Calvin, you both hear um, a little bit of rustling. The guide kind of puts his hand up and then grabs his neck and turns around. His eyes have gone a little glassy, and he he says, uh, they're attacking, and he kind of just falls over. I dive uh, on top of Sister Anna to get her out of the... Yeah, I drop. Yeah, I, I drop and uh, pull. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, everybody's got initiative. So let's go with uh, Calvin. You're going to shield Sister Anna? Yes. Anything okay. else? Try to spot where they're okay. attacking us from. Okay. Do you want to pull a gun? Yes, I, I would pull the handgun. And okay. Yeah, holster. I would have been trying to pull a gun until some man just dropped on top of me. <laughs> What's your size? 16. He's not that much bigger than you. <laughs> 14, I know. I think you're both bigger than Blake. Blake is... Blake's 15. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, we, we got we some are... big hulky people yeah. <laughs> storming yeah. the jungle. Um, uh, My appearance is nine, though, so I am the ugly one. <laughs> wow. Aww. Oh, true to real life. Oh. I got a lot of Facebook love today when my when my wife... Took my phone. I thought she was changing the music in the car, and she mm-hmm. updated my profile photo. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, what the hell's going on? And I'm like, oh, I 
Uh, yeah, oh, I saw you're that. You're so modest. <laughs> I love how he makes it a cat's uh, yeah. fault, not because he did it. I didn't do it. Um, so Blake, what are you doing? Uh, so I will. I was assuming that they have uh, us surrounded. I'm gonna fall to the ground. Um, draw my fall to the ground. Draw my weapon, uh, and look for a target. A uh, pistol or rifle? P- pistol. And Anna, you are attempting to draw your pistol and get out from underneath the man protecting you. Well, no, I yes, but I was drawing my shotgun because I. You don't. have a shotgun. <laughs> did I give you a shotgun, or did I give you a thirty out six? Thirty out six. That's a rifle. Okay, rifle. Sorry, I don't know my guns. Okay. Anywho, so yes, I'm pulling. Like I would have dropped to the ground to grab for my rifle, but then you know. Clive over here dropped on top of me. <laughs> Calvin. <laughs> I know. Okay. I know. I did it on purpose that time. Calvin. That's what she I'm not says. trying to be hindering. I'm trying to be protecting. So I would try to like glare at him and, you know, elbow him off of me. So just to let him know I'm okay. Okay. Um, so Clive, you dive and pull a gun. Give me Who's a. Who's this Clive guy? <laughs> <laughs> Calvin, <laughs> man, you got me doing it. Calvin, you dive and uh, pull your gun. Give me a uh, spot roll, spot hidden. <clears throat> Missed it by six. Okay. Uh, you don't see anything. It's thick jungle, so, you know, yeah. not super surprising. Uh, Blake, what about you? A spot? Yeah. No. All right. Did you get an ot too? No, that's double ot. That's all ot. Yeah. It's all zeros. <laughs> so do his, do his eyes glitch now? Is yeah. That how that works? <laughs> Your eyes explode from the heat. Ew. Um. No. Uh. And then just before Anna would go, three um three men come rushing into the path. Two of them are all three of them are carrying spears, it's decently long hafted. It's not they're not like huge long spears, um, dressed in just loincloth, um, pointing them directly at you guys. Um, so Anna, what would you like to do? Um. So you're saying, saying, um, talk to Thomas. Yeah. So that means that they communicate in the same language. Yes. Similar. Okay. Um, it's likely that Thomas has learned the local dialect. Oh. Um, I would. I would. Um, as I was reaching for my rifle, I would say, <clears throat> "Saying we want to see saying saying." Okay. Um, you guys get all your guns out. So we're going to go to the beginning of combat. Are you, uh, now we're going to declare. Remember, if you have firing, you go off on firing. If you have two shots, which mm, your pistols might. I have three. Unless you're Blake and then he's a machine gun. One yeah. slash two. What yeah, is that? That, that, that should just be one. Okay. Your, your rifle will fire once every round. That was my handgun. So is it? One slash two. That should be just a two. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Right. Um so Calvin. Yes. What are you doing? Um I'm gonna do bullets into the ground. Um, okay. You know, in front of their feet to uh try and just make them stop and Okay and pause okay. not to injure them. Alright, uh Brian. Um the spears that they're bringing up, is it kind of a don't move, or is it kind of, oh, this is going to go into your heart? It could go either way. Honestly, looking at them, like, they're at don't move, but if you do. And so, so three of them have come in. Mm-hmm. And where are they positioned? Um, They came from your right, so they're kind of next to you-ish. Up the trail are, or off like, are to they, your flank? But, off to your flank. Are they, so... Am I between them and uh, Anna? And not directly, but you could be with like a half step, half crawl. Since I'm yeah prone, yeah. 
Um, I will raise to a knee and point my pistol directly at the the closest one and if they take another two steps then I'll fire to kill okay okay uh Anna 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 yes declare I did no 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 you didn't we're declaring again oh um doing ray like getting my rifle ready to shoot but still saying that okay we would like to see saying so, Calvin, you fire into the ground. Yes. Brian, you kind of wait for them to do something. Um, one of them, um, like the the one next to you, Calvin, um, speaks in a dialect that you're not. It, he's speaking too fast. He seems very agitated. So you're having trouble catching on to what he's saying. But essentially, he's saying that uh, you've entered the the spotted leopard tribe area which doesn't make any sense cuz you didn't think you that's where you were at and this is the like this seems a little off but it's about that time that he takes a spear in the side from kind of up and off of the trail um and clutches at it and falls over and the other two look nor look south up the trail and run back into to the jungle away from that <clears throat> So um, just to understand this, the the tribal people that we've seen have entered. Mm-hmm. A spear is, has been thrown, yes, to, and struck one of the tribal people that have entered, and those tribal people have turned. The tribal people who came into our site have now turned and, and ran away. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, except for the one with the spear in him, he's probably dead. Well, then I need to find the person who threw that spear. Yeah, are we now declaring again? Like, where, uh, where are we? At? Well, so, so, <laughs> um, two men, very diminutive. We're talking like four foot, but not pygmy, um, proportioned. Step out in front of you, uh, like on the trail in front of you, with their spears up, kind of turn them, um, spearhead down and put them into the ground, and then walk gent- like walk so slowly threatened. forward. Yeah, they like they're clearly they turn it, stab it into the ground, and walk forward towards you. I. Don't put away my gun, but I drop, but I have it in hand. Yeah, kind of at your side, hanging at my side. Uh, they are still armed with daggers, like on their, like they have a belt, kind of short pant thing, but they're not, they're not pants so much as they're like tatters of clothes um, that they seem to have stitched together. Um, and they're coming just calmly towards you, and they seem to be walking slowly enough to give you time to kind of j- see what's going on there. Um, Brian is going to try to make sure that he's positioned to where he's, um, protecting, in a, in a, not, posi- not just protecting, but in a position to be close to Anna and, um, uh, Calvin and our guide, um, Staying low to the ground, um, and he'll have his gun pointed not directly at, but kind of towards the ground in the direction of mm-hmm. the approaching people. So hesitant, or like uh, preparing in case. Yes, not okay. not quite like at his side as Calvin described, but yeah. not like I'm pointing yeah. it right at you. Okay. <laughs> uh, and Anna. Um. I you know laying prone I'm bra- I brought my rifle up to the ready. Okay. So um, I'm just at this point in time I'm watching them approach. My rifle's ready, but I'm listening to everybody. One man stands stops about eight feet away from you, and then just stops, and the other one keeps approaching, but moves towards the body on the ground of the the guy that took the spear, and he calmly looks Calvin in the eyes, just directly in the eyes, pulls his knife bends down and stabs the guy in the chest right where his heart should be three times and then wipes it off on his loincloth and puts it back and then takes like still watching your eyes takes like five steps back we see saying of the choo choo we are of the choo choo um he responds in english um obviously calvin is taken aback by that 
um, not expecting to encounter natives speaking English. Um, we are also we are also seeking uh, Father Thomas of the Catholic Church. He was said to be among your people now. You may find him with the choo choo. We do not wish to uh, be seen as invaders. We are merely travelers seeking one of our own. They, he looks over at Sister Anna and he says, You are like Thomas. You speak to the one in the sky. You, yes. speak, you speak English, right? Yes. Okay. Wait. <laughs> I gave you. Yes, one. I okay. do. <laughs> you speak to the one in the sky. Yes, I do. You will be given safe passage to the Chushu. We apologize for the spotted leopards. They have come far. They will be quelled. That's not our business to to deal with. But and, thank and you. So you're like six. You're to size sixteen. So you're probably like six four. Yeah. This, is, this is like. I mean, he's almost half your height, but he there's an intensity to what he just said that you you buy it. Well, they <laughs> like know, they're they're they not know the getting jungle. They're gonna, yeah. Yeah. So um they are uh now that you've gotten to take take a look at them, um they are a uh they're a brown skin, but they've also painted themselves in separate browns and now that you're kinda close and the adrenaline's dropping a little bit, you can see the different browns like they would blend in kind of with the dirt or the ground. Okay. Um the they both kinda walk back and pick up their spears and says and uh the one that was speaking says, Come with us, we will take you. Uh and then they pointed the guy to say, uh, pull out the stick yeah. um, and bring him. I'll do that. I'll um, hoist him up. Yeah. Fire him and carry, um, I guess. No, I, I will assist you. Um, Blake um, purposefully does not say anything um, and takes a... After Calvin kind of takes the lead... Um, doesn't take an overly deferential attitude, but kind of also does not show any type of he is in charge or any type of okay. type thing. He's gonna kind of play that quiet to some degree. Do you have uh? Do you have field craft? Yes. Roll that. Pass. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he seems to. Blake seems to fall in line behind you, Calvin, almost like an assistant, but not. Well, I thought he was helping me carry. The... Well, yeah, but I mean, like his his mannerisms have changed enough that you're seeing a change, and he just seems to have changed how he's doing things. Well, whereas before, I hired I you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll I'll just for now I'm just going to chalk it up to yeah. um, you know somebody realizing they're a little out of their depths and. Letting the guy who knows, supposedly knows what's going on do his thing, so it's no big deal. Um, and then, uh, if there's a moment where it would seem to not be noticed, um, I would probably um, put away uh, the cross that I'm probably wearing. Okay. Okay. Um, you guys travel another hour or so. Um, and you find yourself in an, um, kind of like a clearing that abruptly ends in, um, um, a mountain face. Um, there are caves kind of, uh, carved out, or some of them look like they were originally natural and have been reshaped some. It looks somewhat similar to, uh, the adobe carving, or the, the adobe homes. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, but it's a, it's a darker, blacker rock instead of the redder, um, soil there. Um, you see maybe a half dozen people kind of moving about, but that's about it. It seems pretty, um, desolate or, or just like uninhabited. And he said, uh, the one that was speaking earlier says this, this is the choo-choo. Please wait here. Okay. Um, and uh, the one man kind of takes five or ten steps forward and then stops and just, like, he's not guarding you, but he's kind of, his escort has stopped and he's not going anywhere without you. 
And the other man goes into one of the caves that's low on the ground. It's a larger opening, but it gets dark inside very quickly. Um, I need all three of you to give me spot hiddens. Yeah. <clears throat> and as we're doing this, I would kind of lean over to Cla- Cla- Calvin. Calvin and, um, you know, kind of wonder where where is everyone at? Oh, I don't notice a dang thing. You got it, John? Yes. Uh, what about Blake? Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Uh, success. You have to do math. This is different if it was a critical success. Oh, okay, fair enough. Um, so you you looked over at Blake and or over at Calvin and asked him where everyone was at. I was just kind of wondering out loud, but quietly amongst us, where everyone was at. Okay, so the two of you kind of notice. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Blake and Calvin. You notice that in the rock face, right next to the. Um, Big, big open cave that the man just went into. I just figured out why she keeps saying Clive. Why? Because Ian Byrne was played by Clive Owen. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I just portrayed him so well. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no. It's, uh, yeah. From the very beginning, every time she started saying Clive, Clive Owen is the yeah. person who jumped into my head every yeah. time she said it. Darn it. <laughs> I buy it. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, let's go. So, um, next to the big cave opening you see a carving it's it's done in into the rock but it's done in thinner lines so it's kind of hard to make out until you're really kind of standing there watching what you see is a kind of buddha posed anthropomorphic elephant what its ears are large much like an elephant but they have like spikes that come off of them, not necessarily spikes, but they have points that come off of them. So it's not like a car, a smooth a- a ear anymore. It, it comes into points and it's trunk instead of coming up to a, just a slightly larger bit at the, at the end where the nostrils are comes out into almost a disc, the size of a good sized dinner plate. If this were, if this were standing next or if this were one next to one of the tribesmen, um, who are all, by the way, very diminutive. Um, it'd probably be twice the size of them, so it's around eight foot ish. But next to the cave opening, it's still it, it's big enough that it could fit inside easily. As far as the cave is probably ten foot tall. Um, the one that that the gentleman went into. I need both of you to roll sanity. As there seems. Can to be I some... roll a cult? Nope, because you have not seen it, nor have you been told. If they survive this and don't go insane. I failed. I failed. Wow. Uh, you both uh, lose a D4. Uh, Blake, don't mark it permanent since this is, you know, something you'll gain back. It's the same one I lost. <laughs> Yay. Um, you guys, uh, you kind of realize that not only is this just weird, but it's it makes you feel icky inside, and Blake, something tells you that that is a fallen angel, okay. or your interpretation, you know, what, right. that we've talked about. Right. Um, do I know anything else about it? Uh, you could roll it. Um, I would say you're at half of that of the call of the Cthulhu Mythos skill. Do no, I notice uh, a so. change in them, or... Um, they seem quietly, like, they're just standing there. It's not like they freaked out and punched oh, a guy okay. or something. What do you think that is? Um, what is what? The carving on the rock. Now that they pointed it out to you, go ahead mm-hmm. and roll sanity. Can I roll a cult first? Nope, you can roll sanity first. Because if you go insane and punch a guy and he kills you, then you'll never know oh, what it was. Pass. Uh, so you lose one. Um, and then, yeah, you can roll a cold if you'd like. Pass. Um, it's obviously a, a deific representation of something, but you don't recognize it. It looks a little Asian-inspired. Mm-hmm. You've seen some of, of the, the occult like carvings. Um, well, that would be Indian. Uh, that's still... That's that's, yeah. Still. yeah. <laughs> Stop. I got it. Um, I keep forgetting. maybe, I mean, there's some similarities there, maybe, um, but not there. It's definitely not the same. It's like a 
corrupted, mutated form of Ganesh. Okay. Also, you get the the sense that this is also a, one a of the key. fallen angels that, yeah. Okay. I will check on uh, the guide. He's just standing there. Oh, the guide. Um, he's um, he's breathing deeply. Hey, hey how you doing, guard? Um, <laughs> no, he's breathing guy. deeply. Can you roll first aid off for me? Can I assist? Yeah, sure. Why not? I was off by one. <laughs> I nailed it. Uh, he's sleeping. Um, his breathing isn't labored or heavy. It, you don't hear any like a, you don't hear any rattle in his throat, like he's taken on water in his lungs, which could happen from some poisons. He seems okay, but just asleep. While Calvin is down there, um, I'll ask him, um, how many have you counted? Choo choo. Yeah. Uh, have. roll a spot hidden. Success. Do you only see six at a time? You might have seen ten. Total, they give, they are going in and out of the caves. You yeah, definitely yeah. could see ten distinct people there, besides men, the two that you've seen. Men and women. Yes. Um. Yes. Children. No. Um. Probably a dozen at most. No children. Does that match with what I've seen? Um. Ter- terribly racist, but they all look similar to you. It's hard to pick out facial features. You're having a little bit of trouble with it, honestly. Not okay. to mention we're also a good distance off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was it. Just... Are they, like, mill- it's... They're not milling about. They seem to be doing chores and carrying baskets. and. So it's not that they're going in and out of different caves trying to play the shell game with us. Yeah, they no. are they're just more... going about business. Yeah. They're more or less going about their business. Okay. Nothing was taken from us. We have all of our supplies. We have all of our weapons. Uh, I mean, the guide might have been carrying some water for you that might have been dropped, but other than that, no. I mean, nothing was taken from you. You're not down anything. Okay. I'll be sure to have some water, and um, if he's gone more than five minutes, maybe um, uh, a small snack of some sort to make sure that I am like some dried meat. Yeah. Okay. That um, I am prepared for what you guys maybe s- coming. Stand there for a couple of minutes. Um you do you you get out some meat and kinda of offer it around I assume and yeah. um the guide kinda of turns back and looks at you but he seems almost nonchalant in a very guard or guide. The guard. The guard turns back and looks at you and he seems nonchalant but still in a very intense like He's a predator kind of way, like he's prepared for whatever might happen. I will buy for him what we're uh, partaking he in. He takes it and takes a bite out of it. And see, like it's the first time he's really tasted it. He shrugs and to, and like shoves the rest of it in his mouth and stands and chews. It was a, you know, a nice high sunk. It was probably three or four huh. bites, but he, whatever. Okay. Um, the guide starts to come around. Um he seems groggy. Um, he's holding his head like he's, he's got a headache. Um, and if you offer him water, he takes it. He doesn't seem to be upset by that. Um, but you guys have been out there maybe 10, 15 minutes, and then the, the man that went in comes back out, and he waves you waves over towards you, and the guy kind of stands up and straightens up a little bit and starts walking forward and is clearly expecting you to go with him. Um, does our guide from the first village, is he aroused, uh, awake enough to speak? Yes. Uh, then I will ask him in Spanish if he knows who the, was it Jaguar? Spotted Leopards. Spotted Leopards. They're a tribe from uh, farther south. Um, they are, they're not technically in the country of Mexico. He knows that. Um, but they are known to try and expand from time to time. The choo-choos typically keep them from expanding too far. So then we don't need to worry about any side effects of their poison dart that he just took. I will be thirsty for a while. Okay. Um, out of character, were we, were we attacked from the south? Yes. Okay. 
Well, south-ish. I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. All right, then we follow the guard towards the big cave. Okay. You guys I will oh, be carefully looking um, at the wall for anything similar to what we've already okay. noticed. So you guys get to the mouth of the, the cave, and um, the the guard that was stayed with you picks up a torch from the ground, um, and there's a small, like, um, there's a couple of what you're assuming are, like, charcoal, or coal, not coal, charcoal. He kind of holds it to it until it lights, and then hands it to whoever is in front. Which one of you is in front? I think I would be. Okay. So Calvin. he hands it to you. Um, as you start to walk, uh, what are you guys kind of grouped together? Or are you going in a line? How are you going in? I would be in the middle. I would be in the middle. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that presumably it would be um, maybe Anna second, the guide third, and I would bring up the rear. Okay. Okay. Um, the light seems to dim awful quick for that torch. Are there any other? Were there, were there any other torches near the? Uh, there were. So I would light another one if okay. allowed. They don't stop you. Okay. Um, when you say the light dims, you mean the f- torch is going out? No, or? no, like the torch should light up a 10-foot area or whatever, and, and it only not. seems to be at like 5 foot, and then it starts to get very, like, the the light cuts off very quickly. Would and, I have a flashlight, electronic flashlight? Uh, of sort? I don't know. We looked this up before, didn't we? I remember we had them in the Yeah, 20s. go for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can. I would assume that would be something that you would have, yeah. Yeah. Then, um, or at least a lantern of some. Yeah. Okay. So I I started more, you know, civilized and better source of light. Okay. Um, it lights less of an area than it should. Um, I and I, I need Blake and Anna to Anna to both roll a cult. And uh, Johnny, you can roll a little bit of sanity. Failed that one. You are sufficiently creeped out. Yeah. You don't lose any sanity, but it is. Yeah. It is freaking you out a little bit. Like, sure. This is weird. Um, if your character isn't claustrophobic, it might be a little bit now. Like, yeah. the walls are coming in and they aren't really, but, you know. Um, did you guys make it? Yes. No, I failed it by eight. I failed it by eight. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Blake, you know that there are several things that could cause this. There are rituals that, that could cause this. There's magic and so on and so forth. Um, you could also have be in some sort of um, closeness to some sort of magical area or another plane of existence. There are some. I wouldn't think about it in any of these terms, right? Right, would... right. Well, you would know that, that, that this could have been defiled through some magical ritual or something like that and so on and so forth. Well, like, would it, would it even be magical through some power. Well, I mean, um, yes, it would be considered magical, but magic is evil, period. End of okay. discussion. Right. Like, that's that's the biblical okay. belief in it. Right. Um, as you kind of get deeper... Do I, I know any ways to counter or work against it? Um, consecration could do it, um, which could take a little bit of time. Um, if you had holy water, you might be able to use it to light a torch with, with a little bit of preparation. There are a couple of things that you could do, but it would take a little bit of prep time. I would assume that we're traveling with small amounts of some of the more common yeah, yeah. holy objects. So yeah, th- you guys I don't think I'm going to take the time to set up that torch that you mentioned, but yeah. I would assume that between the two of us, there's some holy water. Uh, yeah, holy you, water you have around. holy waters. Yes. You have a, a nice, solid uh, cross. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have anything specific for anything for specific. Like you don't, like you didn't bring the the thing that kills all werewolves because you didn't know you were coming against werewolves or anything like that. But you probably have some basic tools. Um, probably uh, tools. Um, a uh, rosary that belonged to a saint, just a, a saint of protection or something yeah. vague like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, Thank you. So you guys keep walking. I need everybody to make spot hiddens. As you keep descending into the cave, the, the the roof and the walls don't seem to get any smaller. It actually seems to just kind of be a nice long tunnel. It isn't perfect. It does weave a little bit back and forth and up and down. 
but it does go pretty well. Did you guys all get it? Success. Made it. Yes. All right. That's when you start to notice the ca- the carvings on the wall, and you're seeing this depictions of violence and um, sacrifice and war and um, things coming down like from above and attacking people. Um, drawings of this, not actual they're car- moving they're, images. You know, no, no, not not actual moving <laughs> images. Yeah, they're carvings and paintings. They're not. Yeah, okay. they're not drawings, but they are. They're like part carving part paint and they kind of alternate some of the paint looks new but it'll also be right next to paint that looks faded and old um oh you guys can all roll sanity this is fun right what about theology uh, um you could roll a cult after the sanity okay. blake um is going to pull out his cross again now okay all right we made it you guys all make it failed all right uh john you'll lose one Everybody else loses zero if you've succeeded. Um, go ahead and roll a cult. A cult? Yeah, if you'd like. Oh, man. Mr. by 10. Uh, fail. <clears throat> okay. And then, Shirley, you can roll some theology. That's fine. I just want you to get a cult out there first. Yes, made my theology. Okay, so theology tells you that these are depictions of a history. Um, you can see not similarities, but you can see some structuring that you would expect in um, similar carvings and, and paintings that you would see um, in older um, Christian burial grounds and that kind of thing. They're depicting a history and what has happened. This mm-hmm. isn't like a, oh, we hope the gods will come down like this God thing has come down and this is an actual thing that has happened. Right. Um, both uh, Phil, Phil, can you roll Cthulhu Mythos? Uh, no. Okay. Well, I rolled it, but <laughs> just for the yeah. last time. <laughs> no, I, can't I failed it. it. <laughs> um, as you keep walking, you you're looking at it, and you start remembering things but they're not it's not making a clear sense like you you think that looks familiar you think you remember reading about something but it's just it's not quite there for you it's not really connecting yet um and i'm probably a little distracted by trying to not only do that but being present and aware of the moment yeah um after walking for a couple of minutes the 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 tunnel kind of opens up into a large cave uh it's probably 50 feet up 80 feet across, and then from side to side, probably another 125 feet. Uh, it and is we lit- can see all this? Yeah, I'm getting there. Okay. It's lit by torches every so often. Um, on the walls, you can see the ceiling, which seems to be almost at twilight. All like the torch, the, Your torch light doesn't seem to light it or change anything, but it seems to go into a twilight. And as you look, you can almost make out stars. Like, it's a starry sky there. And sitting kind of in front of you... Are, are you trying to navigate? Yeah. Um, sitting in front of you is uh, a very old, but much taller man but compared to them. Like, we're talking like five foot. Um, and then next to him is a, um, a, a gentleman in priestly garb. Who you would know as Father Thomas from the descriptions you were given. And that'll do us tonight for the Nurse Main Presents Masks of Nyarlathotep, Octon Cthulhu, Flashback for Brian Blake, Special Edition, Fun Time. <laughs> happy, happy, joy, joy. Colon, death becomes hurt. No. Um, so we will, uh, we will be doing a couple more of these, but we hopefully you'll be listening and we will talk to you guys real soon. And that will do it for us tonight on the Nerds Domain Presents Masks of Nyarlathotep. Remember, you can email us at nerdsdomain at gmail.com or find us on facebook.com forward slash nerdsdomain on Twitter at nerdsdomain or over at our site nerdsdom.com Be sure to sign up for the newsletter while you're there. 
you can head over to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. We want to thank Josh Shop for our music. Don't forget, you can support us at patreon.com forward slash nerds domain. And check out our shirts at slashloot.com.